we'll learn how to create this cool sine wave distortion effect in a lens. All right, so we are going to use the material editor to create our waving effect. So in the resources panel, I'm going to come down here and add a graph empty. And then up in the objects panel, I want to add a screen image. Once both of those have been added with my screen image selected, I'm going to swap out the material for that graph empty. And then I'll select my material and let's hop into the graph editor. Now I'm going to make my preview window a little smaller just so that we have some more space to work with our material. All right, so first things first, uh, let's get our camera texture back into this. So I can either right click or click on this plus button. I want to add a texture 2D parameter. So let's take this, connect it to our shader, and we have our image placeholder here, this checkerboard. So now to click on this input slot that appeared, and let's select the device camera texture, and it's a little squashed. So let's select our screen image and just change this to stretch. And there we go. All right, so we have our image. Now, how do we add a wave to it? So to do that, we're going to address the UV coordinates. So I'm going to select this UV chords mode and change this to custom. So the UV coordinates uh, dictate how a texture maps, usually to a 3D object, but we can think of our image as a 2D plane. So just missing that third dimension. Um, so you'll see we have this X and Y. And so the X just goes left to right, the Y goes up and down. So let's go ahead and add some surface UV coordinates in and connect it here. And our image comes back. So this is just sampling the UV coordinates of our surface, our image. And then those UV coordinates are choosing which kind of color to show at, the, at each pixel. And so now that we have this back, we can actually come in between this connection and start messing with the coordinates. So I'm just going to stretch this out here so we have some space. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to click and just drag and drop it out. And I want to grab the split vector. With the selected, I'm going to disable outputs three and four because we're just in two dimensions. And then let's drag this out and do a construct vector. Also disable output three. We'll plug this back in. And you can see we get this weird image. So let's connect the Y as well. And we're back to where we started. But now we can start doing some weird stuff in between this connection to get that wavy effect. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. So we have our split vector. So we have our X coordinates and our Y coordinates. So I'm just going to go ahead and have my image. Uh, I'll wave up and down. So I'll be modulating the Y value according to the X. So if we think back to like algebra, Y equals the sine of X. Our up and down motion is a function of our X coordinate. So even though we aren't modifying our X, we're just going to leave this top connection intact. We're still going to need this here to calculate our sine. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and drag this X down and I'm going to look for the sine function. So I'll type SIN, get sine. And I'll grab this and let's connect this to the Y. And let's see what happens. And you'll see that something happens, but it does not look good at all. And it's not the effect we want. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for that. Uh, the first is this is just calculating the sign. It's not animated, so we don't get a wave. And the second one is we've lost our Y coordinates. Uh, so let's go ahead and kind of start to bring those back in. So let's get our sign function animated. So I'm going to add a time. I don't want delta time. I want elapsed time. So I'm going to take this and take my X, pull it out. I'll look for an add node. I'm going to add the elapsed time to my X coordinate. That's going to give us some animation. So we got animation. It still looks pretty bad. So let's make sure we are taking into account our Y coordinate again. So the sine function is centered, is centered around zero. It goes up to positive one, down to negative one. So we can actually add that back to our Y coordinate and we'll start to get that up and down. So I'm going to drag out this Y value. Let's get this add. Let's add our sine function to the Y coordinate. Then let's plug it into this construct vector. And now you can see our sine function is working. 
Now we have this up and down wave. Uh, it's a little exaggerated, of course, but we're getting what we expected to get now. So we are taking our X value, our X coordinate. We're adding the elapsed time so that we get it animated. Calculating the sine function, adding that back to our Y coordinate, and then reconstructing our UV coordinates. Uh, so now that we have this, let's go ahead and clean it up and make it look a little bit better. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the amplitude. So I'm just going to take the output of the sine function and multiply it. So I'll drag out this add, search for multiply. I'll connect it here. And let's just go with 0 0.01. Let's make it a bit smaller or maybe 0.1. Uh, there we go. So a little off still, but we can see it a little bit better. Or actually, I'm sorry, I put that in the wrong spot. We want to multiply the sine output and put that into this add. If something doesn't look right, it's probably because it's connected wrong. All right, so there we go. There is our motion. It is not quite as large. Um, you can see kind of it spilling over top to bottom. We'll fix that in a minute. Now uh, let's get our sine function looking how we want first. All right, so we have kind of this long range, kind of a low frequency sign. Uh, so if we also remember the sine function, if we multiply on the outside, that's going to be the amplitude. If we multiply what's going in, that will give us a higher frequency. So let's move this elapsed time, this add over, and let's add a multiply here. Let's connect it. And let's let's put this at like 20. All right, so now you can see we have a much higher frequency sine function. Uh, maybe our amplitude is a little too high. So let's change this one. Let's go down like 0 0.01. And if it is moving too fast, we can come over to our elapsed time. Let's just bump this down. Let's say 0.3. So that moved a little slower. All right, so here we go. Uh, we have a pretty good kind of waviness going on here. And all we did was just use a little basic math. Uh, it looks a little funny with the nodes, uh, but we're uh, taking our uh, X coordinate, we're adding the time, multiplying it to get the frequency, uh, running it through the sine function, multiplying this for the amplitude, then adding it to our Y coordinate to create our UV coordinate. Now, as a last step, you can kind of see that as um, if we don't have information for up here, it's going to pull from the opposite side of the image. Kind of like in Mario, how you, if you go off the screen one side, you come back the other. So all we need to do to fix this is come back to our scene. And we can just scale our image up a little bit so that we lose those parts off the screen. And that doesn't need to be quite perfect. We're already distorting the image. Uh, but now you can see we have a nice clean edge around the entire thing. All right, so if we come back to our material, um, we can also do this in the um, in the X direction, so kind of waving across. So if we did that, uh, we would just want our Y to be feeding into here, our X feeding into here. We want to keep our Y the same, and then this output would go into the X, and now we get our motion going back and forth sideways like this. Uh, so you can just choose whichever way you want, Y or X. Um, just make sure you're connecting across how you want, and then kind of pulling in the right inputs for these nodes. So overall, it is uh, just a little bit of math uh, messing with the UV coordinates, and that can give us some pretty interesting effects without actually having to do anything to the pixels of the image. We're just adjusting that mapping. All right, and one last cool effect we can do with this. So I've switched back to my original kind of waves in the up and down. So we're feeding our X value into our sine function here. But if we actually pull the Y value in, we can get this other kind of, um, instead of the up and down function, it's more like pushing and pulling like a slinky. So lots of cool things you can do with the UV coordinates.